Currently, India has the largest population in the world, followed by China and the United States. However, this list is about to change. All three of these countries have a decreasing growth rate. In fact, it's only a matter of time until these countries might end up being replaced on the list. Countries like Nigeria are expected to have over 400 million people, which would make it the third most populous country in the world, replacing the United States of America. Around the world, populations are shifting. In Sub-Saharan Africa, the population is growing 2.7% a year, which is more than twice as fast as South Asia and Latin America, which are currently growing at 1.2% and 0.9%. To put that in perspective, that means that Africa is adding the population of France every two years. You heard that right, the population of France every two years. That's a lot of people. We can make these inferences with the help of population pyramids. Instead of trying to track and understand population data by looking at the yearly changes in a table, demographers create population pyramids to visually show different population statistics of a country. The data is divided by sex, with females on one side and males on the other. The y-axis shows the different age ranges, traditionally shown in intervals of five, ranging from zero to 100 plus while the x-axis shows the amount of people, which is shown either as an exact number or presented as a percent. For instance, when looking at the population pyramid of Albania, we can see that 4.9% of the population is between the ages of zero to four years old, with 2.5% of the population being male and 2.4% being female. The different age intervals can be grouped together into pre-reproductive, 0 to 14, reproductive, 15 to 44, and post-reproductive, 45 and up. Understanding these groups provides valuable insights into the country's population trends. For instance, Nigeria has the majority of its population in the reproductive years, indicating that it has a high child dependency ratio and is a fast-growing country that is most likely in stage two of the demographic transition model. As the population ages, more people will enter their reproductive years and have children of their own, leading to a population boom, likely resulting in a population that will almost certainly double. In India, we can see that the majority of the population is now clustering further up on the graph, with less of the population being located in their pre-reproductive years, indicating that India is now in stage three of the demographic transition model. India is still growing, but the growth is becoming more moderate. We can see that as time passes, the amount of people entering their reproductive years will start to decrease as the population growth continues to slow. In the United States, we can see that the population is distributed more evenly throughout the different age ranges, indicating that the country is in stage four of the demographic transition model. Here we can see that the country most likely has a zero population growth, resulting in a stable or unchanged population size. In Germany, we can see the majority of the population is in their post-reproductive years, with the number of people being smaller at each younger interval, indicating that Germany is most likely in stage five of the demographic transition model, as the population will most likely decline as fewer people have children. If this trend continues, Germany will likely see their elderly dependency ratio continue to increase as more of their population retires, putting more of a burden on the workforce to provide. Each of these different countries illustrate different stages of economic development, illustrating the impact of industrialization. Countries with less economic development that have just started the process of industrialization typically have a high growth rate as their life expectancy starts to increase and their infant mortality rates decrease. These countries will experience a population boom as their crude birth rate tends to remain high and the crude death rate starts to decline. As economic development continues to occur, societies start to see a shift in their birth rates. More industrialization tends to lead to changes in culture, shifts in public policy, urbanization, and more opportunities for women in society, ultimately resulting in a more moderate growth rate as the total fertility rate starts to decline for society. Lastly, countries with advanced industrialization typically have a growth rate that is flat or possibly negative. This happens when both births and deaths are relatively low, which generally occurs due to shifts in the culture, increased living costs, less of a need for larger families, and more opportunities for individuals in society, all of which results in the population of the country to remain stable or possibly start declining. 
As you can see, population pyramids are more than just a chart with numbers. They give us valuable insight into a country's future, past and present, and help us understand the different economic, cultural, and political factors that shape a country. So that was just a quick look at population pyramids. Remember, if you found value in this video, consider subscribing. And if you need help with your AP Human Geography class, check out my ultimate review packet. As always, I'm Mr. Sin, and I'll see you next time online.